All right, we are making it happen here again, and we are um, basically trying to factor some things that are a little trickier today. Um, we're going to call these notes um, polynomial equations and factoring, right? So polynomial equations and factoring, and this is 3C, okay? So our goals for today is basically be able to take out the GCF, greatest common factor. We want to be able to factor simple quadratic expressions, um, pretty much things like x squared minus 5x minus 6, something like that. And then we actually want to be able to solve quadratic equations. So it's going to be something like this above x squared minus 5x. But maybe uh, it looks a little different. It equals 6 instead of has a minus 6. So it's the same general premise. Same numbers will be involved a lot of the time. Same um, techniques. But there's going to be a little bit more to it. Okay, so just a little bit more to it. But nothing crazy. We're not going off on a tangent here or anything. We're generally doing the same stuff we've been doing. So again, this is 3C um, of polynomials, equations, and factoring. All right, so you should have the note handout in front of you. You should have this in front of you. And um, there's a few things that are not on your note handout. But what we want to do is just recap what we've been doing. When we factor a quadratic equation, we're kind of using defoil. We look at the signs of the coefficients. What is a coefficient again? It's the number in front of the variable. So this is a coefficient, OK? Um, this is a coefficient, OK? So we're looking at the coefficients to make our decision, the numbers, I guess you could say. And uh, for now, they've been positive. Um, but I think we're getting a little bit more intense than that lately. We're taking out the GCF now. We're going to do a couple things at once. So just bear with me, I guess. We're looking for numbers that will multiply to 6 but add to 7. So in other words, they multiply to 6, but they add to 7. So that's what we want to keep in mind as we're doing these types of problems. And this is just a reminder. Hopefully you remember that 6 times 1 is 6. That multiplies to 6, and 6 plus 1 is 7. So those are the numbers we want to put, 6 and 1. Now, we can put that in any order, but those are the two numbers we have to have, six plus a positive 6 and a positive 1. That's all you do to factor. So hopefully you're cool with that, and you know you can check your answer always by distributing it, by foiling it, by double distributing it in a way. So here's how we would check it. We would go like this. We would have x squared plus, what is that going to be, x? And then we distribute the 6 here, and we'd have plus 6x plus 6. That's a 6. And then we'd have x squared plus 7x plus 6 for a full answer. That'd be our answer, okay? So that's what we need to do. Uh, distribute it out, and that's how you'll get an answer. Um, and that's just a check. So um, what we are trying to do is, always when you're factoring, the first thing you want to do is take out the GCF. That's important. So let's highlight that, literally. Um, we want to always take out the GCF. So fill that into your notes. When you're looking at something, you need to say, is there a number that goes into the numbers, right? So after you take out the GCF, then, and only once you've done that, the first thing, this question you want to ask yourself every single time you look at a problem, every time you look at a factoring, which is going to happen for a long time, you're going to say, hey, can I take out a GCF? Now you're going to continue, but you're just going to bring that GCF along for the ride. So let me show you an example, okay? Here's an example. When we have this for our question, okay? So I'll put Q for question. This is our question that they're asking. And we don't really know what to do, but we do know that is there a GCF is always the question number one. Is there a GCF? You have to ask yourself that question every time. Okay, so I'm, I'm stressing that. It's three or four times I'm saying this. We have to ask if there's a GCF first. That will break it down a little bit. So we got three, we got three, we got 15, and we got 18. So three, 15, and 18 all divide by three. So we know that these can all divide by 3. And we say, hey, do they all have an x? Yeah, they all have at least 1x. Do they all have 2x's, like x squared? Because you take out 2x's from each. No. 
So you can only take an x from each, so you're going to take one x from everything. So you're going to take a 3 out of everything and an x out of everything, so a total of 3x. Now the key is that if you were to look at this and you were to divide this 3 times 3x times x squared, this is important, the red ribbon will give you the red circle. 3x times x squared will give you 3x squared. Let's look at another ribbon. We'll grab a purple ribbon. The purple ribbon should give you the purple circle. 3x times 5x should give you 15x squared. And lastly, and lastly, the orange ribbon should give you the orange circle. 3x times 6 will give you 18x. So here's where we're at. We have now 3x times this big thing, which is x squared plus 5x plus 6. And we want to just leave that 3x alone, and we want to say, hey, can I break this down further? Can I break this down further? So look at it and say, hey, I've seen that before. I know what that is. I'm looking for things that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So that's going to be x plus 3 and x plus 2. This is the new material. We're doing two things together, two things at once. At the end of the day, nothing really new is happening, but we're combining two old things together to factor something in two steps instead of in one step. And it's not going away. It's going to be around for a while. I think we should do another example because I'm going to have you practice some more in just a second. So let me do one more example with you, okay? So let's try negative 2x squared, um, let's say, plus, let's say, uh, 6x, and then let's say minus 8. Okay? Look at the 2, the 6, and the 8 and say, what divides into 2, 6, and 8 divides by? Well, 2, 6, and 8 will all divide by 2. So we're going to take out a negative 2, because anytime there's a negative in front, we take out the negative with it. So we're going to take a negative 2 out of this. And what we're going to have is x squared, and now negative 2 times negative 3x will give us that positive 6x. And now negative 2 times positive 4 will give us that negative 8. So hopefully that's making sense. So we're going to take that out, and now we have that blue thing. And we want to leave that negative 2 along for the ride. And we want to factor this a little bit, OK? So let's look for numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 3. Can you please call 6003? So what will multiply to 4 and add to negative 3? Well, I've made one mistake with my problem, so I'm going to go back and fix it. My apologies. Um, this right here and this right here, these should be opposite signs. So this should be a negative. And this should be a positive. So now we're in good shape. And now we're looking for x minus 4 and x plus 1. That will give us what is uh, basically inside those parentheses. So we're just taking that GCF along for the ride. And we're going to factor into something in two steps now. I hope that's clear. I know it's a little new. But we're just combining two old things. So my question is for you. Um, can you please try these problems? This is the quick check. Try these problems. So this is the now you try. Now you try. So at this point in the video, just pause the video and try those problems. Let me repeat. You're trying to take out the GCF first. So one, GCF out. Take out the GCF. And then two, factor into this form, right? The inside. Okay? So factor into that. And leave that GCF with it that whole time. So these are the problems you're trying. 2x squared plus 12x plus 16. x to the fourth plus 10x to the third plus 25x squared. And then lastly, this problem right here. Negative 4x to the third minus 12x squared minus 8x. So trying those problems, pause the video, and we will move on in just a second. So 
moving on, factoring out the GCF, there's a couple things that we need to remember. This is your last page, I believe. So we're getting there. Um, it's one, there's a couple things that you want to remember, two or three things that you want to remember, okay? And the first thing you want to remember is that you need to take out the largest number, because the GCF is the GCF, the largest number that will divide evenly. When I say evenly, I mean it divides and doesn't come out to a decimal. It comes out to an integer or a whole number or something of that nature. Okay, so the largest number that will do that. So that's the first thing you want to remember. And also you want to take out the largest amount of a certain variable. Largest amount of a certain variable. That can be taken out, which is always the lowest exponent of that variable. So what I would do here is I would say, okay, I have x to the fourth, I have x to the third, I have x to the second, right? What is the lowest exponent of that? That's where I'm going to be in a second. First thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to look at each term, or coefficient, really. I'm going to say, what divides into those three numbers, 28, 4, and 8? I know they all divide by 4, so I'm going to take a 4 out of everything. That's the first thing. And then I'm going to take that one step further down here, and I'm going to say, well, what's the lowest exponent that I can take out? x squared. And then that last term is going to run out of x's. So I'm going to take out the 4 from above, and then I'm going, to take out, I'm going to take out the exponent of x squared. I can take two x's from everything. That's my GCF. And then the rest is how do we get back to this? So 4x squared times plain old x squared would be 4x to the fourth. 4x squared times negative 7x would be negative 28x to the third, because there's a 1 here in a way. You can think of it that way. And um, 4x squared times positive 2 would give me uh, 8x squared. So in other words, in other words, this, this, and this can be found by distributing here. Okay, we don't need to leave that up, but those three terms can be found by distributing to those three terms. Okay, so we're almost there. Um, oh, and there it is. It says you can check your answer by using the distributive property. So just keep that in mind. So what I was just talking about, if you were to distribute these three terms and you get back to your original answer, you know you're in good shape. But before we even do that, we want to look and say, is there anything more I can do? Does anything look familiar? This is important. And this is oftentimes um, left undone. Can that be broken down? Right, so let's take the 4, we have that, we have the x squared, that's good. That all came along, and now the question becomes, what will multiply to, I think that's supposed to be a 12, let's check this out here. Did we make a mistake here? 8, so 4 into that's 7, 4 into that's 2. Oh, it's not going to factor out anymore. So this is really not going to break down anymore. I wasn't expecting this example not to break down anymore, but it doesn't. So how would we get an example that does break down anymore? I'm going to do something annoying, but I'm going to change a number here, just so we can kind of see it. So I'll put it in purple so you can see it. I'm going to change this to a 12. And I want to know now, can that green stuff factor, x and x? It multiplies to a positive. So if it multiplies, multiplies to a positive, then it's either a positive times a positive, or it's a negative times a negative, right? I don't know which it is, but if it's going to add to a negative, I figure it's a negative times a negative. Two negatives will add to a negative. Negative 3 and negative 4 will multiply to positive 12 and add to negative 7. So that would be your final answer. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, maybe this part of the video helps you and you weren't able to do the uh, last part there. That's pretty much where we need to be. As far as what we have for time, I want to see how much time we've got to talk about this a little bit. Okay, I'll take like a minute to talk about this. Not very long. But um, I'm just going to really quickly scratch the surface of this. Could you look at this problem and break it down? That's the first question, OK? Let's say, yeah, it's m plus 2, m plus 1. Hopefully, that's not a big deal at this point. Now, here's going to be something huge. And I want to teach this as if I never taught it um, on the next video. But I still want to talk about it in this video, just to give us a quick idea. If I have something here, OK, if I have m plus 2, this, Okay, and I have m plus 1, this, and together they multiply to 0. So let's call that green thing just, I don't know, x, right? That whole green thing's x. And that blue underline, let's call that y. That whole blue thing underlined is y. 
If I have two things, x, and I multiply it by y, and multiplying those together, and together they equal 0, what does that tell you? Let's think about a few different things that we know about 0. Well, I want to know, like, I don't know, let's just do a quick thing here. Um, 5 times blank equals 0. 0 times blank equals 0. Um, blank times 7 equals 0. Um, 11 times blank equals 0. So let's fill in these answers. Try to think about it. I encourage you to pause the video and try that blue box in the bottom right. Just real quick and think about what fill in the blanks. Well, 5 times only 0 is going to get you 0. And 0 times any number, like this could be 100 or even 1,000, is still going to get you 0. And 7 times 0 is going to have to be there to get 0. And 11 times 0 is the only way you're going to get 0. So what do you notice about every single one of these examples? One of those things is equal to 0. Either the thing on the left is equal to 0, either, or the thing on the right is equal to 0. So it's either x is equal to 0, that thing on the left, or y is equal to 0, that thing on the right. And that's all we're going to talk about. We're not going to get any more into it. I know you're like overwhelmed by looking at this, so let's just, let's just wait on it. But understand that if, some, if two things multiply to 0, one of the two things is 0. I'll say that one more time. If two things multiply out to 0, one of those two things is 0. And that's going to be super important in the future. Let's end the video there.